The New York Knicks defeat the Detroit Pistons 124-99, and it was a record-setting game for Dante DiVincenzo. We'll talk about DiVincenzo, and we also have major injury updates on Mitchell Robinson, OG Ananobi, and Julius Randle. Subscribe, turn notifications on so you never miss a thing. Let's start with DiVincenzo because of how special of a day it was. A record-setting night for the big ragu. He sets the single game most three-pointers made in New York Knicks history. He had it tied for a while uh, at 10, which that record was held by Evan Fournier and J.R. Smith. And to see Dante get it done against the Pistons, who have Evan Fournier, was pretty damn sweet. The dude is special. And in the playoffs, he is going to win you a couple of games because his ability to shoot threes and knock them down. When you have someone like that that can get blacked out hot and make 11 threes, that can change the way a game is won. And when you get back to Randall and OG and Brunson, you're only going to get easier and easier looks if you're Dante DiVincenzo. Good to see him get hot, and it's awesome to see that he set a record for the most three-pointers made in a game by a New York Knicks in history. Let's show him some love, though. Comment zero down below. Show him some love. Uh, he deserves it. He's been great. It's been another a great move by Leon Rose and crew. Um, he, he's been electric. Give me a zero in the chat if you're enjoying the way he's playing. Ian Begley coming in with some updates prior to the game. Let's talk about the injuries. Per Tom Thibodeau, OG and Obi went through some parts of shoot-around. A positive step toward a return to the court. But Thibodeau says... The irritation in Ananobi's surgically repaired elbow still needs to subside further for him to return to the floor. I don't necessarily see um, Begley, excuse me, DiVincenzo, oh, Jesus Christ, Ananobi returning anytime soon as the New York Knicks do have a couple of easy games coming up. You talk about the rest of the schedule. You got Toronto and San Antonio. I don't see him coming back for that. Maybe Sunday against Oklahoma City on March 31st. Or maybe you just hold him out until maybe the last week before the regular season. Uh, and Obi isn't a guy that I think needs a lot of time to get back into a groove. His defense is pretty translatable, so maybe they just hold him off. Update on Randall from Begley. Julius Randall is feeling good, but has not been cleared yet for contact, Tom Thibodeau says. Randall's been doing controlled contact, but hasn't been taking live contact. Randall has been in this stage of rehab for a few weeks. Thibodeau says Randall hasn't had a setback. We also um, talked about on the channel that we had heard that uh, Julius Randall is pushing behind closed doors to let the New York Knicks let him play. And as we record this video on the 25th of March, we are less than a month away from the playoffs. And I've said it time and time again, I think Randall is a rhythm-based player. He needs to play his way back into a basketball groove. I think there's got to be a cutoff where if Randall doesn't return by X state with five, six games left in the regular season, you just chalk it up and you tell him to get healthy. Because I don't want to see him playing his way back into a groove in the playoffs like he had to do last year versus Cleveland. I thought that caused more harm than good for the Knicks. I don't think I want I don't want to see them go through that again. What was funny about all the pregame updates on injuries was Tom Thibodeau essentially said that Mitchell Robinson is the closest to coming back. Um you're gonna change that to Mitchell Robinson is the closest to coming back and being ready to play of Randall and of Robinson, uh, of Ananobi. It sounds like Robinson, according to Tibbs, is pretty close to returning. He's been cleared for contact. He's been practicing at a full capacity. And we had heard from Brian Windhorse that he's going to be back by the end of the month. He's got three games before the end of the month. I think it's soon. Before we get to the stats, before we get to the highlights over the win against the Pistons, my question to all of the people watching today's show is this. If you could only pick one of these players to be healthy for the playoffs, who would it be? Is it Ananobi? Is it Randall? Is it Robinson? Type the jersey number of the player you want to see 100% healthy for the playoffs. I'm very interested to see where this goes. The big story of the game was Dante DiVincenzo. Um, really was never that tight of a game. The New York Knicks came out. I believe they were on a 20 to nothing run in that first quarter. They made a lot of shots. Pistons did not. Even Chenzel did a whole lot of that. 23-pointer shot, 11 made. He was really, really good. And 
Now he is the owner. The most three-pointers made in the game by a Nick in New York Knicks history. Josh Hart. He did what Josh Hart does. Helter, skelter, stuff in the stat sheet, finding a way to make winning plays. He does that yet again. Another triple-double for Hart. I believe this is the sixth of his career. All six coming this season. Um, 11, 14, and 10. When he's out in transition and he's in control, he's one of the best at pushing the break. He was really good, I thought, on finding open shooters outside of the break. It also helps when someone makes 11 threes to stack up those assists. Josh Hart, there's no reason he can't play like that every game. He, he was great. Hartenstein, again, looked really good in the first quarter. And then it was kind of a minutes restriction the rest of the way. I believe he's getting healthier and healthier. We're getting close to him being 100% as he's really nursing that Achilles injury. But um, that's where we are on that. Jalen Brunson has 28 points, six assists, two rebounds. Um, thought he played okay. He got hot in the second half. I think he made three straight shots to close that third quarter. Good to see him knock it down from three. Before we get to the rest of the stat seeps, I want to tell everybody about our proud sponsor, uh, Price Picks. Check them out. Go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS. Promo code CLNS, the number one daily fantasy sports app in North America. Shout out to them. Now is the time to play prize picks. I know the NFL season is over with. I know college football is over with. But the NBA is heating up as so is the action in March Madness for the men and the women's. And they always have awesome deals for new and returning users. Put 100 bucks into your account. They'll match that up to $100. It's prizepicks.com slash CLNS, promo code CLNS, and uh, we'll hook you up. Support the show. Support the sponsor. We kindly ask that you do that. We love having prize picks as a sponsor. And to keep them coming back and sponsoring the show, we need the real ones to step up, show up, show out, play prize picks. All you do is create a lineup <clears throat> of two to six players, and you simply choose more or less on their projected stat line. It's pick more, pick less. It's prize picks, the number one daily fantasy sports app. Um, check them out. Always awesome deals. Taco Tuesday. They have awesome deals almost every day of the week. Check them out, prizepicks.com slash CLNS, promo code CLNS. Good to see Boyan Bogdanovich, I feel like, just see a couple shots go through. He's been really disappointing so far since coming over to the Knicks. But against his former team, the Pistons, which it's hard to judge any results versus this team, considering I believe they are the worst team in the NBA by a good bit. He was able to get some shots to go. Um, still not shooting the three-pointer well. He also has this KT, KT tape on his back going down up to his neck. And I feel like he wasn't elevating that much on his shot. I wonder if he's hurt. I wonder if that's what's affecting him. Not 100% sure on that. Knicks are going to need him to make shots in the playoffs. That's why he was brought here. He's a career 38% three-point shooter. Just be your floor. You need to be better. Knicks need him there. It was good to see him make some shots. Miles McBride. At some point, I think we just got to accept that this is the player that he is. Another productive night. Another good game. He brought it on defense. He made Marcus Sasser work. And he also gave you good production on the offensive end. 13 points for him, five rebounds, and other four assists for him. Really an underrated part of Deuce McBride's game since his minutes have gone up is that he had four assists. Um, and he continues to be a great playmaker. He rarely turns the ball over. He didn't necessarily shoot the ball all that well. One of seven from three, 41% from the deck. But it still, still felt like his impact was felt, his impact was made. And I feel like once you become a player that can affect the game outside of just making shots, you're a valuable, valuable piece. And Miles McBride has been that pretty much the entire second half of the season. You look at the overall raw counting numbers for the Knicks, 30 assists. I like that on 45 made shots. They were moving and grooving. They were passing. They were finding open guys, uh, and they were making shots. They shot 50% from the field and 41% from three. They also out-rebound the Detroit Pistons as well, and uh, they held them to 38% from the field and 29% from three. The only thing, if I'm going to be bitter about tonight's game, is it was never a game in the third and fourth quarter, and still the minute production for some of these people were way too high. I know Dante DiVincenzo was out there to get the record, but do I really need DiVincenzo playing 40 minutes in a 30-point win over the Detroit Pistons? Do I really need Josh Hart playing 39 minutes? Does McBride really need to play 43 minutes? Um, maybe, though, this is just who Tom Thibodeau is. And I'll just have to accept it, but it will never be right in my mind that Tibbs, I don't want to say runs these guys into the dirt, 
but he definitely doesn't do a good job of preserving them. Uh, maybe that just is where we are on that one. Hard to complain about anything. I'm pretty pessimistic, so I find it kind of easy. But, um, look, you win. You blew him out. Record-setting night. He was never in question. Don't be afraid to play the bench a little bit more, kid. I don't need 43 minutes from Deuce, 39 from Hart, and 40 from DiVincenzo. Because we're going to need those guys playing big, impactful, meaningful minutes in the playoffs. Make sure you are subscribed. Free, informative, entertaining updates every day on your New York Knicks. Turn your notifications on, and let's go Orange and Blue. Thank you.